last week we talk about uh, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 this is what we call the elementary teaching or the elementary the principles of the elementary doctrines of Christ okay now we let's move on to the next verse Chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 3 to verse 20. Okay. Sabi ni Paul, so verse 3, And this will do if God permits. Pansin niyo yung context nito. Basahin ko po ulit sa inyo. Yung Hebrews chapter... Uh, uh, chapter 6. Verse 1 to 3. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ. Here, Paul is saying, let us move on to maturity. Let us now leave the discussion on the elementary uh, principles of Christ. So, that let us go on to perfection. So, ito yung context nitong chapter 6 na ito na let us move on. Ibig sabihin, there is a uh, journey na ating pong nilalakaran. And most of us, we stop. ba? Like for example, there is a journey of knowing God. It's not enough that you are born again, that you know Jesus. There is a journey you have to encounter the Father. Same through here, sabi ni Paul, leaving the discussions of the elementary principle of Christ, let us go on to perfection. So there is a doctrine or that a uh, principles of perfections na gusto ni Paul na ating ano, uh, puntahan. Okay? Not laying again the foundation of, this is the six uh, elementary principles of Christ. Uh, rep, uh, foundation of repentance from dead works. Faith toward God. Doctrine of baptism. Laying out of hands. Resurrection of the dead. And eternal judgment. And verse 3, sabi niya, And this we will do if God permits. So, ibig sabihin, the writer of the book uses this expression, if God permits, to suggest the possibility of God resisting us from coming into our full inheritance in Christ. Bakit daw i-resist ni Lord yung ating uh, coming or growing into perfections? The reason is, if we fail to deal with the elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ. So, ibig sabihin, before you can go to the perfections, kinakailangan ma-perfect muna natin itong elementary doctrine of Christ. And most of us are living under the impression that's much of our struggle to come into the full in, full of inheritance in Christ has a lot to do with the devil's ability to resist them, to resist us. Karamihan sa atin, ang paniniwala, ang jablo ang pinipigilan tayo para tayo ay maabot natin yung fullness of Christ. Mga kapatid, you will be surprised about what going to, to share to you this morning. In most cases, this is not the case. Yes, the devil can hinder you. But in most cases, much of our struggle actually originates from the fact that God is resisting our soulish effort to possess our spiritual inheritance. 
That's why the very elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ is repentance from dead works. Remember what I've discussed last week? The dead work is not necessarily evil. It is something that we do that is not in alignment with God, the way God do things. Because remember, God has a protocol in heaven. The kingdom of God has a protocol in heaven. He has a protocol how things is being done here on earth. That's why there is an order. Diba? God is a God of order. Why God would resist our soulish effort in attaining perfections? Because we have not given God a proper foundation of truth to build on within the bounds of our life. The six elementary teachings or the, the six uh, uh, elementary principle of Christ, this is the very foundation. We need to perfect this one if we want to grow. Because remember, God is a builder. And like all builders, the Lord respect foundations. Tandaan niyo po. Unless the Lord build the house, those who labor, labors in vain. God is telling us foundation is very, very important. Even earthquakes, He respect foundations. Di ba? Kapag ang bahay ay, you know, Maayos, hindi yan basta-basta magano, babagsak. The Lord knows that anything of worth that is built on a false or inadequate foundation is already doomed for destructions. That's why sabi ni Paul, this elementary principle of Christ is very important so that we can move on to perfections and most of the time it is the Lord who is hindering us to go on to perfection because our foundations is not yet right that's why there are so many things that is happening in our lives there are testing trials all of those are what part of building the right foundation over our lives the Holy Spirit wants to bestow the blessing of Abraham upon your life. Everything that God has given to Abraham, kasama po tayo. That's why we are joint ears with Christ. And everything and everyone who believes in Christ is be, becomes a spiritual Israel. And everything that the Lord promised to Abraham is for all of us. So once you become serious about building on the foundation that is Christ, Gusto niya ibigay sa atin ang blessing, pero hindi niya ito maibibigay hanggat hindi ano, naayos ang ating ano, foundations. So, all of us are in a journey para maayos yung foundation. If you take to heart the above-mentioned doctrine of Christ, the Lord will permit you to move on to perfection. Kaya sabi ni Paul, the author of this uh, book of Hebrews, God permits. God would only allow you to move unto perfection kapag ano, naayos na yung ano, elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ over your life. That's why sabi niya, therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ. And go on unto maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works, of faith toward God, and of instruction about baptism, the laying out of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And then yung verse 3, sabi niya, if God permits. So ulitin ko po, it is not the devil who are withholding you or are preventing you from going into perfection. Most of the time, it is God Himself who are withholding you, who are keeping you from going into perfection because of the foundation in your life is not yet right. Next, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who were enlightened 
and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So this is now the result. Now if we reach to that perfection may warning naman si Lord na sabi niya for those who were once enlightened. So ito na yung mga ano ito yung warning pag na-reach mo yung perfection. You'll be enlightened. Pero may warning siya na ikaw na nakaranas ng heavenly gift and become make partakers of the Holy Ghost at ikaw ay ano, if you will choose to fall away, wala nang ano, wala nang repentance para sa iyo. Now, this passage is one of the favorite passage of Christian legalists. Alam niyo kung sino yung mga legalist na yan. Who place undue burden on a believer's ability to live a righteous life rather than on God's faithfulness to keep us blameless until the, the, until the day of Christ. Most of this verse, most of, marami mga preachers gumagamit itong verse na ito. Ang tawag ko sa kanila mga legalist. They always condemn people, especially yung mga nagkasala. Unfortunately, this passage has been used by well-meaning pastors and teachers of the word to heap condemnation on many brothers and sisters who have fallen into sin. Madalas itong ginagamit nila to condemn those people, those brothers and sisters who have fallen into sin. At sinasabi nila na wala ng pag-asa para sa iyo, you have been doomed. You have committed the unpardonable sin. Okay? Now, bad teaching had convinced them that they already been committed the unpardonable sin. Kaya madalas, yung mga nagbabackslide, ayon na nilang bumalik sa Panginoon. Sa kadahilan na na, dahil doon sa maling katuroan na yon, inisip na nila na sila ay ano, they have committed already what we call unpardonable sin. The context of the loss of salvation in this particular passage is about choice and not sin. Tandaan niyo po, nung sinabi ito ng writer ng Hebrew, he is not talking about sin. It is about choice. Bakit ko po nasabi yan? The reason Apostle Paul does not insinuate that sin can cause a born-again believer to lose his or her salvation is because Christ already paid for our sin, past, present, and future, on the cross. So, hindi pwede ang maging dahilan ng pagkawala ng salvation ng isang tao ay dahil sa kasalanan. Bakit po binayaran na ng Diyos ang ni Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo ang lahat ng kasalanan ng tao past, present, and future. But tandaan nyo po, this statement is not a license for any believer to live in sin. Kasi po, itong ganito klaseng lifestyle, pag pinili nyo ito na okay naman, ligtas naman ako, it only attracts the judgment of God. Why? If you keep on living on sin, the enemy is what? Accusing you in the court of heaven. And you keep suffering the consequences of that accusation. Nakuha niyo po? So, hindi yun license. Now, I'm giving you the right interpretation of this verse. Sin is to have no dominion over us. Remember in, uh, I think, in John, Chapter 14, verse 30, sabi ni Jesus. Sabi niya, I will, not talk, I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world, speaking to the devil, is coming and he has nothing in me. Sabi niya, the devil has no legal right over my life. Or in other words, 
I have nothing in me that belongs to Him. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya, kapag meron tayong mga bagay that belongs to the devil, he has a legal right over us. And if he has a legal right over us, he can do whatever he wants to us. He can manipulate our life. Kaya ayaw ni Lord yan. Ah, wala man magawa ang Diyos. Bakit? He respect our will. Nakuha niyo po? And the only way to deal with that sin is only in the courts of heaven. Because that is a form of what? Accusation. So we have died to sin and its passion through, throughout, through our blessed Messiah. Now, sin, sandaan niyo po, was effectively overcome on the cross when the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. So bayad na, it is finished. So this unpardonable sin, is the author of the Hebrew is not talking about sin. That a person will go to hell because of sin. No, because of choice. Kaya, personally, this is my belief. I still don't have many scripture to support this belief. Sa akin lang ito. Nanginiwala ako na lahat ng namatay, before they go to where, wherever, they face God for a judgment. Remember in Hebrew, sabi niya, for it is appointed for man to die once and afterward judgment. That is a court trial. He faces God and there he is going to be asked by God if he believed on what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Kaya, I believe personally, kaya yung mga namatay na hindi nakapagawa ng desisyon natanggapin si Kristo at paniwalaan ang ginawa ni Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo, I believe he was, they were given a last chance. Or even before na sila ay malagutan ng hininga, I do believe binigyan sila siya ni Lord ng, I believe, encounter with the Lord. To give him a chance to make a choice to believe on what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross and no one is necessarily going to hell because of sin, the only person that will go to hell is when he make a choice to go to hell, not to believe on what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. So any human being who end up in hell is there not because they sin. Because they failed to choose Christ as the appropriation for their sin. <clears throat> Yun po ang dahilan. Kung bakit maraming tao ang napupunta sa impyano. Because they choose. They failed to choose Christ. Nakuha niyo po. And I believe yung verse na yun sa Hebrews, sabi niya, it is appointed for man to die once and afterward judgment. I believe there is a spiritual encounter that happens to a person before he will end his breath here on earth. On the other hand, born again believers who forfeit their salvation are those who knowingly choose to deny Christ as the appropriation for their sin. After, pagkatapos daw ng ano, they were once enlightened. So, Anong ibig sabihin ng author na ito daw yung mga merong tinatawag na unpardonable sin? The unpardonable sin for us believers here on earth happens when we were once enlightened or come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ but at the end, we rejected Him. Second, they have test, tasted the heavenly gift. Eh, paano yung mga Baptist na hindi naniniwala sa Baptist ang mga Holy Spirit? So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa nila naabot yun. So, how can they commit it, how they can commit the unpardonable sin? ba? Number three, they were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Ibig sabihin, they experience all the above plus began to function in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
eh pa, paano yung mga hindi nagpa-function doon? ba? Diba? Number four, they have tasted the good word of God. Ibig sabihin, they experience all the above plus began to function in deep kingdom and Christ-centered revelations. And most of us, hindi pa natin naaabot yan. So how can we commit this unpardonable sin? They have experienced the power of the world to come. Ibig sabihin, they experience all of the above. Plus, they were used by God to operate in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. And most of us, hindi pa natin na-experience yung mga bagay na yan. So, how come that we can commit this unpardonable sin? Nakuha niyo po. So, the passage is actually showing us how far God is willing to go before He can let our foolish choices determine our eternal positions. God is full of grace. Kaya, hindi pwedeng gamitin itong verse na ito ng mga legalist to condemn those brothers and sisters who committed or fall into sin. Hindi pwede. At kahit pa dumating yung ganung point, hindi pa rin natin trabaho ang mag-condemn. Di ba? Trabaho ni Lord yun eh. Di ba? The writer of the book of Hebrews makes it staggeringly clear that if a believer who has experienced the aforementioned, the above-mentioned blessing of the kingdom of God chooses to walk away from God, they can never ever be renewed to repentance again. Yun ang ibig niya sabihin. At yun, binanggit ko sa inyo mga bagay-bagay na especially the powers of the age to come, karamihan sa atin, hindi pa rin natin ito na-experience, but some of us will just taste a little bit of that. Pero not all of us are living on that kind of life. So, hindi pa natin. Malabo pang mangyari ito sa atin. Nakuha niyo po. In their choice of denouncing Christ at this stage of spiritual maturity and experience is tantamount of crucifying Christ all over again. So, yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. So, in spite na naranasan mo na ang lahat na man-mention ni Paul, at dininay mo pa rin si Kristo, what you are doing is, you are crucifying Christ all over again. So, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6, was not written to Christ's loving believers who sins from time to time. Tandaan niyo po, ito pong talata na ito, ay hindi sinulat ni Paul doon sa mga Kristiyano na nagkakasala from time to time. Kaya nga nag-provide si Lord ng courts of heaven para kapag nagkasala ka, di ba sabi ni Paul sa 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, sabi niya, I tell you this for you not to sin, but if you sin, you have what? An advocate in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. So sinasabi ng Panginoon, pag nagkasala ka, the enemy is already accuses you in the court. And the good thing is you have a lawyer that would stand besides you to defend you in the courts of accusation. Or we call it the criminal court in heaven. Because the devil in Hebrews, in Revelation chapter 12 verse 10, he accuses us day and night. Nakuha niyo po? Araw, araw at gabi, ang sipag niya, he accuses us. This does not mean that I'm encouraging any born-again believers to live in sin. That's not what I'm saying. But, whether you like it or not, most of us fall to sin from time to time. We are not yet perfect. We're still growing up. Naalala niyo po. Kaya nga, kapag bumagsak ka, inakusahan ka ng kaaway, you go to the court and present yourself and plead the blood of the Lamb. Next, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 7 to 9. For the earth 
which drink in the rain that cometh up upon it, and bring forth herbs, meet for meet for them by whom it is dressed, receive blessing from God. But that which bear it turns and barriers it rejected, it is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned, but beloved. We are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. Basahin po natin sa English Standard Version. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 7 to 9, ito ang sabi, For the land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those for, for whose sake it is cultivated, receive a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to be being cursed, and its end is to be burned. Okay. There is a lot of talk about the blessing of God within the circumference or within the body of Christ. Almost every Sunday, they talk about the blessing. And most of us, marami pumupunta sa church, they're being faithful to God for us to receive the blessing. Di ba? Okay? Yun ang gusto natin, di ba? Blessing. Hmm. Kahit anong pag-usapan ng mga Christian, they always talk about what? Blessing. Everyone, is striving to live under the blessing of God. Kaya, ginagawa natin ang lahat na ating magagawa for us to live under the blessing of God. Because we know the if we will not live under the blessing of God, we will be living the opposite. Living under the curse. Okay? Unfortunately, Many believers do not know that there are two kinds of blessing. Number one is the blessing of God. Number two, the blessing of the Father. Remember in Ephesians chapter 1? Basahin ko po sa inyo. Verse 3. Blessed be the grace, uh, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ <clears throat> with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Mga kapatid, where is the blessing coming from? It is not, the blessing is not in the physical realm. The blessing is in the heavenly realm. That's why, pagdating sa Ephesians chapter 2, 6 to 7, he talks about being raised us up. Diba sabi niya? Verse 6, And He raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He raised us up. Para ano? We can experience the blessing of God. Because the blessing of God is where? In the heavenly realm. Naalala niyo po yung definition ng prayer? Sa Greek means prosyokomai. It means entering the presence of God. That's why every time we pray, we close our eyes and we pray, what happens is we enter the realm of the Spirit. Even though you are here on earth, but in the spirit realm, you are seated with Christ. You are already blessed. You are already blessed. You are already blessed. So many believers are striving to experience the blessing of God upon their lives. When in reality, they should be striving to live under the blessing of the Father. Maliwanag po yung sinabi ng Panginoon. Sa 
Sabi niya, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places even as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for the adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace which, which He has blessed us in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will, according to His purpose which He set forth in Christ as a plan for His fullness of time, to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Him we have obtained an inheritance. Naalala niyo po? The blessing is a form of inheritance. The blessing of the Father is a form of inheritance. And an inheritance is being given to the Son. You don't need to work for it. The Son has not, has not, should not work for His inheritance. The moment His Father died, automatic, He is the ear. And He will receive whatever the Father has left to Him. And Jesus Christ said that when Jesus Christ died, He left us an inheritance. That's why sabi niya, we are joint ears with Christ. In Him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will so that we who were, in, who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of His glory, in Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believe in Him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. Hallelujah! The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. Jesus Christ, what, what He did on the cross of Calvary, the Father gave us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee deposit Alam mo yung guarantee deposit? Alam mo, gusto mo bumili ng lupa? Para hindi mabenta yan sa iba, you pay the owner of what we call a guarantee deposit. Pag nabigyan mo na siya ng guarantee deposit, he is legally bound to sell to you the land. So hindi niya pwedeng ibenta yun sa iba. Nakuha niyo po? So when Jesus Christ died, He gave us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee na tayo ang ano, tagapagmana who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. So there is a difference between the blessing of God and the blessing of the Father. The blessing of the Father is the inheritance. That's why He made us sons and daughters. Because only sons are entitled for the wealth of the Father. Nakuha niyo po? There is a big difference between the blessing of the Father and the blessing of God. Tinan niyo po. Inexplain ni Paul yung blessing of God. The blessing of God is general goodness of God to all who is creation without discrimination. Kaya sabi niya nagpapaulan siya sa mabuti at masama. Di ba? Inexplain niya yung ulan na bumabagsak sa lupa. At Halimbawa, nagtanim ka, kahit ikaw ay masama, masipag ka, nagtanim ka, aani ka. The blessing of God can be accessed by both the just and the unjust. For example, will God send the seasonal rain? They rain on the fields of both wicked and the righteous. Hindi naman namimili ang Diyos eh. Dahil ang tao, mahal ng Diyos. Nakuha niyo po? And God is blessing the people, whether they are righteous or they are wicked. Example, if a farmer, if a wicked farmer has worked and planted seed in his field, when the rain comes, it will cause his crop to grow too, regardless of his inability to acknowledge divine providence. Kahit di pa siya magpasalamat sa Diyos, 
pag umulan yan at nagtanim siya, tutubo yan. Nakuha niyo po? Make it sure lang na tama yung mabuting binhi ang tinanim mo. Sa matabang lupa, siguradong tutubo yan. As the body of Christ come into a deeper understanding of Christ's Melchizedek priesthood, many believers will experience the joy of living under the blessing of the Father. Because God wants to bring many sons to glory. Pag-aaralan po natin yan sa Hebrews chapter 10. And one of the purpose of God is to bring many sons to glory. Not servant, but sons. And the blessing that God entitled, uh, the, the blessing that He wants us to receive is the blessing of the Father. And the only way you can receive the blessing of the Father is for you to experience that you are a son and He is your Father. Remember in Matthew 11, 27 says, No one knows the Son except the Father and no one knows the Father except the Son. Okay. No one knows the Son except the Father and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. So in other words, you cannot know the Father by yourself. It must be Jesus that is in you must reveal to you who is the Father? That's why unless you receive the revelation of the Father, you will never experience the blessing of the Father. That's simple as that. That's why God wants us to walk as a son. He wants us to pray as a son. Not as a servant, but as a son. So the blessing of Abraham is of this order. Tandaan po, the greatest ministry here on earth is the ministry of a priest or the Melchizedek order, the order of Melchizedek priesthood. Unbelievers can never experience the blessing of Abraham. This powerful generational blessing is reserved for the children of God. So the unbeliever will receive the blessing of God. But for us believers, there is another blessing na intended para sa atin. That is the blessing of our Father in heaven. It is that within the reach of the unbeliever, no matter how hard he worked for it, they cannot receive this blessing. Only in sonship, they will experience the blessing of the Father. Because God wants us to appropriate for who He is. He is a Father and only sons can appropriate God as a Father. No one. That's why this is a journey. Because when the love of the Father is revealed into your hearts, you receive that love, you will now understand that you are a son. That's why diba my, my song, uh, the, you don't need to live in fear. Why? Because you're already a son. God wants us to live as a son. So what is the barometer? That the love of God is not present in you. When you start to worry and fear, that is the barometer. The love is already, you are already the piece of the love of the Father. That's why kapag nag-worry ka na, isa na yung sign. O natatakot ka na, isa na yung sign that you are already deficit of the love of the Father. That's why you have to enter the presence of God and receive that love. Romans chapter 5, 5, sabi niya, He pour out His love into our hearts because His love, Lamentation chapter 3, is new every morning. New every morning. It means the love that you have received today will expire tomorrow. Why it will expire? Because there is a new dose of love that He wants to you to receive. That's why if you want to master something here on earth, you need to become a master receiver. Because everything 
James 4.17 says, Everything is a gift. And the, on, the only thing that you can have that gift is, on, is only through receiving. So if you learn to become a master receiver, magsawa ka na sa blessing of the Father. Amen? So, the blessing of God and the blessing of the Father. Anong gusto mo? Matandaan nyo, ang unbeliever, kahit anong gawin niya, kahit magtambling-tambling pa siya, he will never have the blessing of the Father because the blessing of the Father is only reserved for the sons of God. Next, eto maganda. Sabi niya, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward His name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to full assurance of hope unto the end. That's why, yung nagsimula ito sa Amerika, nagkaroon sila, ginawa nila ang month of October is the appreciation month for the pastors. Diba? Minister's Appre App Appreciation Month ang month of October. Because we were all born for significance or work. It is the way God created us. That's why, tinan nyo sa Facebook, ang daming mga nasa mga tao na araw-araw nagpo-post ng picture nila. And one way to understand that is this. We were all born for significance. Work. Para bang sinasabi niya, sana may makapansin sa mukha ko at batiin, Hi, you're beautiful. Nakaw niya po. It's only a manifestation of the way God created you. You need significance. The cry for significance is the eternal echo of the seed of dominion that God deposited in man. Because of the seed of God that is in us. Okay? So, okay lang yon. Mag-post ka ng picture. Wag lang yung ano. But during times of insignificance, while the Lord is forming us into His chosen instrument or vessel, it would seem like our labor in the Lord is lost on those closest to us. Di ba? Most of the time, hindi man na-appreciate ng iba yung ginagawa mo. That's why nag-create nga sila ng appreciation man sa mga pastor. Kasi siguro, naisip nila na yung mga pastor ay under appreciation. Hindi na-appreciate nung, nung mga karamihan ng mga membro nila. Oh. Nakawin niyo po. But if you are in Christ, you understand who you are. You don't need other people to appreciate you. Di ba? Kaya, kasi ang sabi ni Lord, God is not righteous to forget our labor of love and the fact that we have faithfully ministered to His children. Hindi niya yan makakalimutan, mga kapatid. That's why I don't need October to experience the appreciation. Because God Himself said, God is not unrighteous to forget our labor. Nakuha niyo po? Hindi ang kakalimutan ng Diyos. It is recorded in heaven. When you saw this, a sense of relief, swept will come, and instant deliverance from the feeling of insignificance. Kaya madalas, maraming tao nagpapapansin. Kasi they have this feeling of insignificance. But remember, that's the way God created us. We have value, we have worth. Kaya sinabi ni Lord, hindi ako unrighteous para kalimutan ko ang ginagawa mo para sa akin. Look, uh, basahin niyo yung Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7. Sabi niya, huwag kayong magpray na nakikita ng tao dahil kung kayo magpipray na nakikita ng tao, you already have your reward. See? May reward din yun kahit wrong motive. Ano yung reward? Mapapansin siya ng tao. Oh. 
Kaya sabi niya, what you do in secret, it is my Father that will reward you. Nakuha niyo po. So, the thing is, what do you want? The the praises of men or the or the praises of God for you? Sabi niya, well done, good and faithful servant. We want to hear those words from the Lord. Suddenly, pag naunawaan nyo that God is not unrighteous to forget your labor, suddenly it did not matter whether people recognize your service in the Lord or not. That's why you don't need a month of October for the appreciation month for you. You don't need it. Because you will know that God is the one who will appreciate what you're doing. He will reward you of your labor. Oh. The Lord would never forget your labor of love. Amen. So, Paul, the author of Hebrews, is telling us, wag mong, wag mong, wag ka mag-dwell doon sa sinasabi ng mga tao. Kahit hindi pa niya pinapansin o napapansin yung ginagawa mo, okay lang yan. Kasi ang Diyos, hindi unrighteous para kalimutan niya ang iyong mga labor of love. Next, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 to 15, it talks about faith and patience. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them, through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained from the promise. Faith has a twin brother that makes it even more effective if the second element is properly applied. There must be patience added to our faith. That's why faith and patience. Okay. Think of faith as the hand that reaches into the spiritual world and lay hold of the promises of God. And now think of patience as the muscle that supplies the strength or energy to the hand to hold on unto until the promise is full into your material world. Remember Abraham, he waited 40 years. Why 40 years, Pastor? First, he waited for 25 years for Sarah to conceive a child. In the middle of that, in the 14 years, sabi ni Sarah, she lost her patience. Sabi niya, anakan mo na yung katulong ko. Baka yan ay yung promise. At sabi Lord, no. I'll give you a son in the right time. And the right time is after 25 years. And then, nung umabot na ng 15 years old, si Isaac, God told Abraham to offer him to me as a, a sacrifice. <gasps> so, 25 plus 15, 40. They waited for 40 years and then suddenly, mawawala lang. Parang bula yung promise na yon. But Abraham obeyed God because he knows, even though he's going to kill his own son, he knows that he, God can raise him from the dead. God showed his, uh, Abraham showed his loyalty to God. The test in the altar of Moriah is an altar of obedience. He was given instruction by God and he obeyed God. Abraham showed his loyalty to his God. So if you can think of faith and patience from this perspective, you will quickly come to appreciate the above scriptural passage. Kaya, ang example na ginamit niya ay sino? Si Abraham. They waited and waited and waited. Some of you received the promise of God. When you got born again, you, you received a prophetic word and made a promise. 
we also receive prophetic word from most of the time from prophets coming from other countries telling us that we will be a ship nations we will become uh, blessed nations or oh. we will bless other nations but up to now hindi pa natin nakikita up to now the people in the government are what corrupting our money oh di ba hindi pa rin na, hindi pa rin natin nakikita yung realidad ng pangako ni Lord Nasabi niya, even daw ang ekonomiya ng Hong Kong ay babagsak pag pinagpaala ang Pilipinas. Anong ibig niyang sabihin? Ibig sabihin, we will be blessed financially at yung mga katulong sa Hong Kong, sa Singapore, babalik na. At sila ngayon ang ano, most likely, babagsak ang ekonomiya nila. Bakit? Wala nang katulong. So, mapilitan yung mga nanay mag-stay home. Di ba? Mag-alaga na anak nila. Kasi wala nang magpapakatulong sa Hong Kong. Kasi ano, mayaman ang Pilipinas. So hindi pa natin nararanasan yon Tayo yung bansa na may pinakamahal na kuryente. Wala tayong oil. Actually, meron. Hindi lang hindi palang binubuksan ng Panginoon. Oh. But we've been waiting for it. For too long. Kaya nag-celebrate na tayo ng Jubilee nung last 2020 ba yun? O, oh, or 2019? But up to now, hindi pa natin nararanasan ang manifestation nito. That's why you need what? Patience. We have the faith. We have that belief in the prophetic word of God. But you need patience. May isang taon nagpipray for patience. Kasi nawawala na siya ng pasensya. Ang sabi niya, Lord, give me patience now in Jesus' name. <laughs> It doesn't work that way. The writer of the books of Hebrews shows us that all the partier who came into their inheritance did so by deploying both faith and patience. So same true with us. The blessing that Paul is speaking is the blessing of the Father. And this blessing is in a form of inheritance, mana. At ang mana ay kusang ibinibigay. You don't need to work for it. You don't need to labor for it because that is an inheritance. That is a gift that is being reserved for you. And I believe there is an inheritance for the nations of the Philippines. We have to patiently wait for it. Amen. Kaya nga, ano sabi nga niya, sabi ni Paul? Sabi niya, For when God made promise to Abraham because he would swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Can you imagine? I swear. Promise. Pexman. He swear unto himself. Bakit? Wala na mas mataas sa kanya. So God swear to himself. Natuto pa rin niya ang lahat ng ipinangako niya kay Abraham. Kasama po tayo doon. Kaya sabi niya, I will bless thee and multiply, I will multiply thee. Oh, para ramihin tayo. So, anong ginagawa ng gobyerno? Nag, nag ano? Nag, <laughs> nagpo-promote ang family planning para uh, kasi pag dumami daw tayo, baka hindi kaya ng ekonomiya natin, ng pakainin. Yung mga tao na yan. No. God, the purpose of God is for us to multiply. Kasi kung titignan nyo lang ang Pilipinas, ang lawak pa ho ng Pilipinas, lalo dito sa Mindanao, malawak pa ho. Ang problema lang, we are concentrated in the cities kaya maraming mas squatter. But kung ito ay spread out and our economy will be good, eh wala nang squatter dito sa Pilipinas, time will come. At ang sabi niya, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. We have to what? Patiently wait. And it will come. Amen? It will come. Darating din yung time na di ba, pag pumunta ka sa abroad, alam ba, dollar ang pera doon, mataas ang value, lagi nating ano, kino-convert sa peso. 
Oh. Pero, tandaan mo, pag andun ka, alam mo, nasa Amerika ka, dolyar ang kita mo, dolyar din ang gastos mo. So, almost the same. Di ba? May something different lang, may mga bagay na iba, sabi nila, na mura daw doon ang pagkain. Oh. Oh. Kaso lang, mataas ang tax. 30 or 40% ata ang, ang tax nila doon. So, pag nagtrabaho ka, 70 lang ang mapupunta sa iyo. Oh. Next. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. For men barely swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the ears of promise the immutability of His counsel, confirm it by an oath, that they two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who had fled to refuge, to lay hold on the hope He set before us. Sabi dito, ang mga tao nagsiswear, nangangako, di ba? When He swear, He swear to by the greater. God swear to Himself. Bakit? Wala nang tataas sa Kanya. Okay? And what was that? The immutability of His counsel means the state of not changing or being unable to be changed. So, dalawang bagay. God does not change and God cannot lie. God does everything, tandaan nyo po, from a position of purpose and foreknowledge. Before He do something, He already know the end. Nakuha niyo po? He knows the end from the beginning. That is what it meant by foreknowledge. When He created man, He knows what will be the consequences if man will choose to disobey Him. He knows and He already planned ahead of time. That's why the death of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that He was Jesus Christ died even before the foundations of the world. That is a foreknowledge of God. Hindi pa nangyayari, alam na niya ang katapusan. Nakuha niyo po. So, the immutability of his counsel means the writer of the book of Hebrews tells us that even though God's counsel is already immutable, immutable or not changing, the Lord went out of his way to reassure to the ears of the promise he gave to Abraham that even though it is impossible for God to lie, the Lord swore to bless Abraham and his descendant, both Jews and Gentiles. Can you imagine? The Lord went out of His way to reassure us. Hindi lang siya nag-swear. Can you imagine siya? Hindi lang siya nag nangako. At pangalawa, Imposible pa rin sa kanya na magsinungaling. Oh. Ito ay ginawa ng Diyos para sa atin. Para paniwalaan natin ang ating Ama sa Langit. Hindi siya katulad ng tatay natin sa lupa na sinungaling at masama. Pero yung ating Ama sa Langit ay hindi siya pwedeng magbago. Hindi siya pwedeng magsinungaling. Bukod doon, nagswear pa siya. Nakonyo. Why would God who cannot lie bind himself to an oath? Why would God need to swear? Eh hindi naman siya pwede magsinungaling. Labag yun sa kanyang naturalesa. God swore to demonstrate how deeply He desired to bless us with everything contained inside the blessing of Abraham. Yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. Kaya siya nagsumpa. Ginawa niya yon para ipakita sa atin yung kanyang pagnanasa na tayo pagpalain ng Panginoon. That's why, do not be content of the blessing of God. Receive the blessing of your Father in heaven. 
Because the blessing of the Father in heaven is in a form of inheritance. And He wants to give you that inheritance. And that inheritance is contained in the blessing of Abraham. If many kingdom citizens understood this, their level of hope in life would be higher than that of most humans. Hindi tayo matatakot kahit ito pang COVID-19, Omicron, o anumang variety yan, variants ang ilabas nila, we will not be afraid. And we will not be coerced or even stop us from fulfilling our role here on earth to bring in the kingdom of God or the government of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Dahil binanggit ni Paul yung tungkol sa hope, ang sunod na verse ay tungkol sa hope. Hebrews 6.19 Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the veil. When a ship docks into the harbor, sailors throw down an anchor into the water below to hold the ship in place and stop it from drifting away. Yan yung purpose ng anchor. Okay? And Paul uses the anchor to explain to us this truth. The writer of the book of Hebrew tells us that the hope that we derive from the knowledge of the immutability of His counsel has now become the anchor of our soul. Nakuha niyo? Yung knowledge natin doon sa immutability of His counsel, ibig sabihin na ang Diyos ay hindi nagbabago, na ang Diyos ay nangako, nagswear pa siya, kahit hindi pwede siyang magsinungaling, ginawa niya pa yung nagsumpa pa siya. Promise! Mm. Oh. Di ba? Na lahat ng blessing ni Abraham bigay ko sa iyo. Oh. And that hope becomes what? The anchor of our soul. Ah, bakit anchor of our soul? Bakit kinakailangan may tali yung ating mga kaluluwa? Why the soul? Because the soul is the seat of our will, mind and emotions. Toka di po. The soul is the seat of our will, mind, and emotions. It is truly the seat of our self-consciousness. Yung ating pagkatao. Ever since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, nothing can get us into trouble faster than the soul that is not anchored into God. Kaya nung simula magkasala ang tao, we live according to the dictate of our soul. Not according to the Spirit, because our Spirit is separated from God. Even though we are born again, we're still what? Living? Kasi, intricate yun eh, body, soul, and spirit. Hindi mo pwedeng paghiwalayin yung tatlo. And most of our life, we're using, we're being led by the soul. Right? So, and if our soul is not anchored in God, madali itong masway in. Ma, uh, ano ba tawag doon? Madala na sa anumang agos. Kung saan mapapunta yung agos na yun, madaling madala yung ating mga kaluluwa. That's why, yung hope na binabanggit ng Panginoon, the hope, yung pag-asa natin na ang Diyos ay the immutability of His counsel, na ang Diyos ay hindi nagbabago, ang Diyos hindi pwede magsinungaling, ang Diyos ay nangako pa, nagsumpa, pasya na lahat ang pangako niya kay Abraham ay mangyayari sa atin. That hope becomes the anchor of our soul. Amen? The unsanctified soul is a magnet for worry. Alam niyo ba yun? That's why God wants to bring our soul into subjection to our spirit. Because until our soul is in subject to the Spirit of God that is within us, that soul will always be a magnet for worry. Hmm. 
Amen? Fear, stress, envy. O, ilan, ilan po lang yan sa mga bagay na pwedeng maghila sa ating mga kaluluwa. Amen? Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, if your soul is anchored in God, how? You receive God, you know God as a father, and you have the revelation of a son. Now, if you're a son, your soul will be anchored to the hope that God has an immutable purpose for our, for our life. But the Apostle Paul tells us that this overpowering surge of hope that comes from knowing that God is not a liar and that He is fully committed to backing up His word is a sure and steadfast anchor of our soul. Ano ang sabi ng Panginoon? Jeremiah 1.12 He is watching His word to fulfill it. Ang Diyos mismo, binabantayan niya yung salita niya para ito ay matupad sa buhay natin. That is His commitment to us. That's why that hope become the anchor of hope for our soul. This means that instead our soul wallowing in self-pity or drawn in sorrow, malunod sa pagkalungkot, it can rest in the calming knowledge of the immutability of His counsel. Yung ating mga kaluluwa we can rest into that immutability of His counsel. Na lahat ng ipinangako ng Diyos, lahat ng blessing ni binigay niya kay Abraham, matatanggap natin. Amen? You just need to rest your soul into that knowledge of that immutability of His counsel. His counsel is steadfast. His counsel remains unchanged. It is already written in the book of life in heaven. What you only need to do is what? To claim. To claim whatever counsel that He wants for you. This river of hope actually goes beyond the veil into the very presence of God. That's why He wants us to be a priest, to enter to the throne of God. So that we can experience this river of hope. <clears throat> Next. Last burst. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Without the book of Hebrews, tandaan niyo po, understanding the royal priesthood of Jesus Christ and its inner workings, would have been lost on the consciousness of the body of Christ. Thank for the book of Hebrews because in this book, in explain thoroughly, yung priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ as a high priest and the priesthood of all the believers. Ulitin ko po, the highest ministry that a believer can be involved is the ministry of the priest. Without the book of Hebrews, the New Testament significance of the order of Melchizedek would also be lost on many generations of Christians. The writer of the book of Hebrews tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ is our forerunner. Anong ibig sabihin ng forerunner? A forerunner is a person who goes ahead of those who are yet to come and prepares the way. That is a forerunner. Jesus Christ became our high priest. He entered into the heavens. Naalala niyo po, every year in the Levitical priesthood, the high priest offer the blood of the scapegoat is sprinkled into that <coughs> holy of holies once a year. <coughs> when Jesus died on the cross, He offered His own blood for the remission of our sin. At tandaan niyo po, He did not enter the altar made of hands. He did not, uh, he did not enter 
into the altar of the Levitical priesthood. Why? Jesus is not a Levite. He is not qualified to offer a blood sacrifice into that altar. Only the tribe of Levi. Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. And what happens is he enters the heaven. And there he brings his own blood in the altar of heaven. Because the temple of Moses is the replica of the real altar that is in heaven. God showed to Moses the real altar in heaven. He went there and offered his own blood. And he became what? A poor runner. Ibig sabihin, may susunod sa kanya. That's why every time we pray, we enter into that altar. Jesus, our forerunner, has gone beyond the veil. Beyond the veil, he has been made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He went into that veil. At ang symbolically, ano nangyari? Yung veil doon sa temple na hati sa dalawa. So, ibig sabihin, sabi niya, there is a new and living way. Pwede na tayong pumasok. Because of the blood of Jesus, every one of us that is born again can now enter into the very presence of God. So, it follows that those of us the born again believers who are following in his footstep are also called to operate beyond the veil as king and priest under the order of Melchizedek. That is our ministry. Our ministry is to operate as kings and priests under the order of Melchizedek. Kings means you are in a no marketplace. In the Levitical priesthood, the priests are not allowed to have an extra work or a sideline. But in the Melchizedek priesthood, the pastor has to have what? A business. Because you are a king. God will give you the power to create wealth that would expand the government of God here on earth as it is in heaven. And as a priest, you are what? Obligated to enter the to enter the throne to the, the, the throne of God for what? to intercede you are what? parakletos there's a lot of things to be prayed for you are called to enter the heavenlies to present sacrifices offering that is our what? work we are to operate beyond the veil beyond the physical veil the real ministry is not here on earth, mga kapatid. The real ministry is in heaven. He wants you to enter beyond the veil. You need, you, God wants you to enter in the realm of the Spirit. That's where we operate. And whatever you hear from the Spirit, you bring down here on earth. That's why the ministry of the priest is the highest ministry that a born-again believer can be involved. The end. Okay? So next week, we're going to talk about, we'll move on to the next chapter, Hebrews chapter 7. Today, let us thank the Lord for what He has done to us. Let us uh, pray. Hallelujah. Lord, maraming salamat po for teaching us, learning us to understand the ministry that you have called us to. Is to be a priest into that order of Melchizedek. Lord, maraming salamat po sa araw na ito. Pagpalain niyo po ang bawat isa na nakikinig dito sa Zoom at even sa Facebook. Bless them, Father. And let them experience the blessing of the Father. And Lord, today, I release the blessing of the Father to each one of us right now. And this is God wants us to strive for. 
Not the blessing of God, but the blessing of the Father. In a form of inheritance. Thank you so much, Lord, for making us your sons and daughters and partakers of that inheritance. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now go to our communion. Sabi ng Panginoon, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now partake the bread. <clears throat> 